What's up you guys? Welcome back to beautiful Spokane Valley Archery. Home of MFJJ where he's kind enough to let us come out here and make these YouTube videos and help us with our archery process. Today I want to talk to you about the hinge. I've committed to hunting with a handheld, about the pros and the cons of hunting with a handheld, more specifically a hinge. Okay guys, just a healthy little disclaimer before we get started today. I'm in no way an archery expert. You should not take your advice from me. I'm just here to kind of share my journey, share my process, and I hope you can pick something up along the way. We're surrounded by great information. MFJJ is a real source of knowledge. Dan has more hunting experience than he can shake a stick at. Me, I'm just an amateur that tries hard. Let's hop in, talk a little bit about hunting with one of these and maybe some of the pros and cons and thoughts and what it's helped me with. Now let's rewind a little bit and go back to three years ago. I hunted New Mexico. New Mexico, I drew this dream tag. That was the first year I was really committed to upping my archery game. So I kind of like dove in. Dan started teaching me things, Josh started teaching me things. I committed to shooting year round. And part of that commitment was shooting a handheld. Not this, I actually started with the Carter Wise Choice. And I thought it was pretty cool and I still like it to this day. I think it's a great release. New Mexico kind of turned into a rodeo, a show if you know what I'm talking about. I wasn't prepared to hunt with a handheld. Although at the end of it, I did end up getting it done. I only had like one or two arrows left in my quiver on a backcountry hunt which means I was shooting a lot more than I should have been, and I was just not in control of my process. Now, I think when you're under pressure, I'm not sure you're ever gonna be completely in control, but you can certainly be more in control than I was. Fast forward, I eventually led me to saying, hey, let's, let's do this better. And part of the process of doing it better was learning to shoot back tension. And the hinge was really the tool that I started to learn to really feel what it felt like to shoot back tension. I could occasionally make the thumb barrel go off back tension, but I think there were a lot of things that were incomplete yet. But this really helped round those things off. So let me highlight a couple of the changes that I made that have like really helped me sturdy up my archery game. Switching to this was a good start, but when I first started shooting it, I would actually make it go off by just rotating it. And MFJJ was like, hey, no, that's not the right way to shoot this. You wanna rotate it to your click. And then once you get to your click, you pull and push and the tension of that will snap it and make it go off. That really helped me connect the dots. Now another thing, and we made a video about this that I will link below. Josh was mentoring, teaching me again, and he was watching me shoot and he was like, hey, when you're shooting, we have to get this shoulder down. Like we have to suck that shoulder down. If you look at it, it was like up here and he was asking me to suck it down. And the idea of that was we're trying to just bring everything so we're using our bones and our skeletal system, not our muscles. Now I'm actually gonna make another video, a follow-up video with Josh talking about hunting with a hinge. I still don't know if it's 100% practical for most. I want him to give his opinion on it, but I wanted to talk about just what I have experienced so far and kind of my process. There are three big things that helped. Shooting with this, learning to make it go off back tension, lowering my shoulder blade, also making sure my hand was this direction, not this direction. I would kind of get like a hyperextended elbow. Final piece that actually particularly one of the most helpful things was when I got back here, I used to have really tense hands. Like my hands would be like really, really tense. And that tension in your hand makes it really hard for things to move. When I would go to shoot like a thumb barrel, it was hard to get the elasticity of a hand to push against that thumb barrel to make it go off. When I go back now, I try to keep my hands as relaxed as possible. And my wrist, my wrist will look more like this. In the past, it would actually look like this, which is pretty uncomfortable if you think about shooting a bow like that. But that's what it was, and I didn't know any better. And with some guidance, it's it's helped me a lot. It's really helped my downrange accuracy. Most importantly, it's helped my process when I've got under pressure. I've only shot one animal with a hinge. I want to kind of highlight that experience, and that hunt is coming to the channel too, by the way. But I want to highlight that experience and what it feels like to me to hunt with this and what it felt like under pressure. The one thing that I do really like is I like the click. So when you rotate this, it comes to a click. Mine's on a pretty short click, but that click is like, a warning sign that you're getting close to making it go off. When I hear the click, I, I like everything eases up. Like I know it's about to go off. And what it reminds me of is it reminds me of taking the safety off of a rifle. For example, when you're getting ready to shoot, the last thing you do is take the safety off your rifle, wrap your finger, squeeze. And that's what this reminded me of under pressure. So when I got into a pressure situation where I had the biggest buck of my life in front of me, I pulled my bow back and I heard that click and I leveled my bow and everything. It just 
it kind of brought everything right back to being present and being in the shot process. The bow went off as a surprise and the arrow hit true and everything went really, really well. Now, I don't have long-term results to share with you because I haven't used it for a long time. I just wanted to hop on here, share my process. Now, just a quick review of some of the pros and cons of hunting with a handheld. I would say the number one drawback is they're expensive. And if you have one, you probably should have two, especially if you're not strapping it to your wrist somehow. They do make accessories. There are ways you can jimmy rig these things and get them on your wrists. <laughs> yeah, they're expensive. And having one, you probably should have two. Pros, most tournament archers shoot with a handheld. So there's something to be said about that and the accuracy that can be drawn by, by learning to use one of these efficiently, effectively. There are some who will shoot a wrist strap and I get that, but overarchingly, most pros will hunt with some type of handheld. There always seems to be some debate on, on whether a surprise shot is good or not. And I think that really comes down to the individual and what is actually a surprise. But one thing I do know from just shooting from a long time is that when you go to shoot something, at no point should you rifle your finger into it. And that goes back to like learning to shoot a rifle 101. You're supposed to wrap your finger, squeeze your hand, and there's never any of any of this. So trigger punchers, I don't think there's any reason to argue that you should have a controlled shot. What is actually a surprise? Well, I don't know. Having a controlled shot, I think is, is important. The, uh, this, the idea of you don't know when this is gonna go off and really learning to steady your pin on target. It's been good. It's been beneficial for me. I think it's been very valuable now. And when I go back to shooting with a thumb button, I can shoot the thumb button handheld and I truly feel like I can get back here, be relaxed, push and pull and make it go off without activating my thumb. I look at this as being a really, a very helpful tool and a step in the right direction for my archery process. This year at TAC, I shot probably the best I'd ever shot. I was really close with Dan on day one and then that night, barley sodas. Next day, not so great, <laughs> that's on me. But next year, Next year, Dan Staten, I'm coming. Dan's worried, actually, he knows. He sees me in his rear view mirror, and I can just see that little quiver in his lip when we start talking about tack. I'm looking forward to sinking my teeth into shooting my bow more often and becoming more proficient and really seeing how far I can I can push it and get good with this thing and get good with my bow. And, and the next evolution for me is learning more tuning and just getting to know my equipment better and refining my process. And uh, we're just gonna bring you guys along. I'm definitely not here to tell you what to do. I am in no way an archery coach. In fact, I'm an amateur. I just try hard. I try hard, I enjoy this. I wanna share my story with you guys. I hope you appreciate that. Do us a favor. We're trying to chase down 50K subscribers this year. Appreciate you guys correctly because there's a lot of different ways to fire this but when fired correctly it's near impossible to flinch or react to the shot because you don't know what's going off and that's the idea at the end of the day if we can have a perfect shot we wouldn't know it was going